Hey guys, this is Nick Nanavati. I'm here to teach you today about how to beat Imperial Soup Armies and the many different flavors they come in. So there's a lot of different versions of Imperial Soup Armies and they come in many different flavors and sizes, which makes it really hard to make a general concept on how to beat them. But generally speaking, they always come with some sort of cheap Italian, some make for them into the Loyal 32 or the Rusty 7 team. Probably some big thing or some sort of fire support in the form of a couple Lehman Rust tank commanders, an Imperial Knight, or something like that. And then usually their defensive option of choice, be it Bulgrin, Blood Angel Smash Captains, or Goleman, or something else entirely. But that's the basic formula for how to make an Imperial Soup Army. This army is incredibly effective and it won both Nova and LVO in the past year. So I'm going to go through and tell you exactly how to beat it and exploit all of its weaknesses with various armies. So as you can see here, this is a common setup in tournament formats. You have two large line of sight blocking ruins in the middle of the table, and your opponent's going to be on one side of it while you're on the other. So as the knight player here, I have an issue that my knight can only move through this corridor like so. It can wiggle through, no problem, and that's fine. But if my opponent was to, say, put something in the middle of this corridor, maybe a Venom or something inconsequential, which he doesn't mind trading for the knight, the knight is now move blocked and doesn't have access to this entire part of the table. If you can do this successfully over the course of a couple turns by staggering just one Venom in, the knight comes in and kills it. The next turn, bring the next Venom in, knight comes in and kills it. You've now robbed this knight of multiple movement phases throughout the game. If you can do this while simultaneously holding your own objectives in your backfield over here, you're mitigating 500 points of your opponent's army, the Imperial Knight, for basically the cost of a 75 point Venom a turn. Or even better if you want to use something like 10 Imperial Guardsmen if you're playing a mirror match. You know, that's a 40 point unit. You're trading for the effectiveness of your opponent's 500 point unit. Mitigating Large models like that is often a better strategy than trying to deal with them. Only certain armies have access to tools that can actually kill the Imperial Knight. When you go into the Imperial Suit matchup, you need to identify which army you are. Are you the type of army that can go in there and kill it as a legitimate strategy? Or are you the type of army that just needs to survive its damage output while playing to the mission and using your other strengths around it? Identifying that in the beginning is key to your success. Here's a great example of how just 10 infantry can slow down a knight. Now, a lot of people think that knights can walk right over infantry, and to a degree that is true, but what the real rules say is that a knight may only fall back over infantry. So what you can do is take your guard squad and advance it right in front of the knight, like so. Be careful, though, because if it's a character, you need to keep yourself outside of three inches for heroic intervention. So just three inches like that, you can pre-measure this, no problem, and just move in advance. If you're running Imperial Guard like I am here, you can have orders to move twice, so this is really easy to pull off. Even if you're not, though, it's not hard to get this close to a knight because they're already running at you. It's pretty normal. Most people try to run away from knights. Oftentimes, this is a mistake. And there you have it. This knight now has to walk the long ways around the unit. He's not falling back since he's not in close combat, so he can't just trample on right over and get to your juicy company commander who's standing on the objective. Likewise, he can only move to one inch away from the infantry because that's as close as he can get. And he's got this 4,000 point Gatling cannon, this million strength battle cannon, and he can shoot and remove all these infantry, no problem. But then what's he gonna do? He's still a mile away from this company commander, not within 12 inches, cannot it declare a charge on him. And your company commander is a character, so he wasn't able to be shot by the knight. So you've just won this exchange. He killed the squad of guardsmen, but you're holding the objective. And just like that, over and over and over again, with your multiple squads of guardsmen or scouts or racks, rangers, what have you, your basic troop choices, which you need to take your to fill your battalions, are excellent at speed bumping the knight like this. So what happens if you're one of the armies that wants to kill the knight as their main strategy? Let's say you have tools for it, like the, the humble Blood Angel Smash Captain. This guy is a monster at anti-tank and can really destroy knights. But your opponent is smart and savvy and has set up lots of screens. This is a really effective way to mitigate the effectiveness of a Blood Angel Captain. So he's got a 10-man guard squad all strung out like so. And the knight back here blasting away. There's nowhere for you to just deep strike your Blood Angel Captain that's nine inches away. Or that is nine inches away and within charge range of the knight because the knight's not right up against his guardsman. This would be an example of a very poor screen. Your opponent's savvy and he's all the way back here. So you can't go on this side of his lines. You can't get into his lines because you'll be within a nine inch enemy. How do you kill the knight? Well, you can use the fact that you have the character rule, which is one of the most amazing keywords in the game, and just hide out of line of sight. Or if that's not an option, you can hide in plain sight 
with your own unit of five Blood Angel Scouts hiding in a ruin. Because the Knight doesn't have line of sight to the Scouts, he's not going to be able to shoot them. And because the Scouts are closer to the Knight than the Captain, they are about 16, whereas he's about 18, he can't shoot the Captain either. So in your following turn, you can just use your actual movement to move right over the Knight, launch your charge, and then kill this guy in the face. So that's an awesome way of mitigating the effect of this Knight by killing it. The key to success with this army is to identify how you can deal with the knight. Once you deal with the knight, then you're just fighting a bunch of guardsmen and one counter charge unit, which is effectively only 1,600 points once you remove the knight, or even less. So how do you deal with the guardsmen and stuff like that? Well, it's one of my favorite tr tactics, and it's called wrapping stuff in close combat, trapping a model, taking a hostage, what have you. But basically, it works like this. This is actually a tactic I used personally at the Nova Open last year to get me all the way to top 16. So you have a squad of guardsmen that the knight player is using to be his basic screen. So again, he doesn't want to get assaulted by your big scary stuff. And you have your unit of orcs. You have a couple options in this scenario. You can take your unit of orcs and charge straight at the guardsmen, like so. Move six, in charge, and 10 orcs charging 10 guardsmen. I'm sure most of you have played 40k enough to know that this is going to wipe all the guardsmen out. But when you do this, you're standing here right in front of the knight. There's not really anything you can do, and the knight is going to blast your orcs away. And now you have no orcs left, and there's still a knight, and that's that. So what can you do? These orcs are now going to move forward six inches. And instead of just charging to wipe this unit out, they're going to charge in a really specific way. Let's say you roll a below average charge, but still very doable in this scenario, of just five inches. You move your four, first orc just barely within one inch of a guy, and then you move every other orc just like so over here. So they're in coherency, but not within an inch of this model, who's within an inch of the enemy, so none of these orcs can attack. And they're not within an inch of these guardsmen, so none of them can attack. And we're going to do the same thing over here on this side. Just five inches, because that's all we rolled. Healthily below average for this demonstration. And we're just going to keep coherency like that. So we're going to swing with on orc. He's got three attacks. You can choose to swing with your bare fists if you want to instead of using your close combat weapons. If you have powerful weapons like big choppas and power claws or whatever, you don't want to swing with those. You'll kill too many guardsmen. The object here is to not kill the guardsmen. So you swing with your bare fist, but orcs have a lot of attacks, and you kill a couple. Your opponent wises up to what you're dealing, so he pulls the ones right here in front of you. But that's OK, because you still have your pylons right off the bat to get just 1.1 inches away from this guy. 1.1 inches away from this guy. These guys can just hang out in the coherency. And then you get your consolidate. So you're going to go three inches like this, three inches like this, and three inches like this. And then these guys just fix it into coherency. And then again, three inches like this, three inches like this, and three inches like that. And just like that, you've now trapped these models. These mo this unit will no longer be able to fall back in your opponent's movement phase. He can't physically move without moving over the space of your model, so he can't actually move, meaning your opponent won't be able to fall back. So your orc unit is locked in close combat. Your opponent will not be able to shoot him next turn. And this 400-point gunboat is really, really sad. Now, of course, in this exact scenario, the knight can just charge the orcs and probably step on them all because it's 10 orcs. But if you do this properly with a unit of 30 orcs, that's a much different story for the knight player, and he is now in a very losing position. So different armies use different tactics to fight the knight imperial soup army, but they all have an option to do it. You have to first identify what, if you're going to kill the knight or if you're going to or mitigate the knight. This is a great option for mitigating the knight, where the smash captain was a great for killing the knight. Whichever path you choose, that's your strategy. Once you find out, just pick tactics to enforce them. So there's a few ways you can beat Imperial Soup armies. Whichever one applies to your army may be different than the next, but there you have it.